So let's fly over the College of Cape Town, set right on the tip of Southern Africa that you can see there. And to set the scene, I want to start off with the Portuguese and then the Dutch trying to travel down the African coastline to get to India via the Cape. And I want you to check out that band of cloud that's stretching all the way from South America on your bottom right, all the way through to Cape Town. And that was basically an easterly set of winds that the Portuguese used to get around Cape Town and to India. And that meant they could avoid this really dangerous part of the coastline that you can see coming up where a whole bunch of shipwrecks happened and instead bravely sail out into the Atlantic Ocean and then catch the winds which sped them in to Cape Town. And instead of this nasty kind of windswept desert coastline, you suddenly got this beautiful jewel sitting right on the southern tip of Africa. And it's there that you can see the eight campuses of the College of Cape Town and the central office. And you'll also be able to see Robben Island, Dutch for Seal Island, where the locals who used to live in and around the Cape area used to bring their goods to come and trade with the ships passing through. And one particular guy Orchumato set himself up over here and made sure that when the Dutch and British ships came through that he would provide them with the goods and the services they need to carry on their trip. And bear in mind this was before Jan van Riebeck was around and in fact once Jan van Riebeck arrived Orchumato formed the major trading nexus between the local people living in and around the Cape area and the Dutch and he was eventually imprisoned on exactly the same island for resisting the incursions of the Dutch and then taking over the land around the Cape. So Orchimato actually goes down as one of the first political prisoners resisting colonialism and white supremacy. And we can see the consequences of the struggle as we fly into Cape Town, going over some of the richest real estate in South Africa and the world, around Clifton with its beautiful beaches and Camps Bay, overlooking the Atlantic Ocean in summer, sometimes until 9, 10 o'clock at night, with the sun gently shining into your mansion, and over Cliff Neck, into the city bowl. There you can see the Maltino Reservoir, one of the oldest dams in Cape Town. And right near it is the Gardens Campus. Now this used to be a ECD center, Early Childhood Development Center, but it's now become a call center academy to support the business process outsourcing unit. And basically the idea there is what you do is you outsource all sorts of skills to all the businesses in the area that need things done which they can't do themselves. So you kind of like subcontracting. It's like a third party call center but also a space where students with newly acquired skills can start to work in the various companies spread in and around Cape Town. Now we're pulling out to get a view of all the College of Cape Town's campuses stretching out over the Cape Flats. And we're going to visit the campus that enables the College of Cape Town to claim that it's the oldest TVET college in South Africa because the building we're going to was actually initially the Cape Technical College. This was started all the way in 1920. Eventually it became the College of Advanced Technical Education and the Cape Technicon. And then in the 1990s, it was actually passed over to form a seaport, the Cape Peninsula University of Technology. But the building was held onto and now forms the city campus of the College of Cape Town. And right next to it you can see a way older building. In fact it's historically basically the oldest surviving building in Cape Town and there you can see the Castle of Good Hope with the cement actually coming from Robben Island. What happened was they used to collect all the seashells there, burn them and then mix them with lime to form a very strong cement. Now the city campus offers art and design, business studies, hospitality, travel and tourism. It also has a residence nearby, although there's not nearly enough amount of space given the demand for students to stay in the area and it's been marked as a, a very important area of investment and growth for the uh, College of Cape Town. So let's pull out over the city of Cape Town 
where you can see the beautiful highways and the astonishing harbour with the railway lines running from the harbour and feeding the rest of uh, South Africa. And we're travelling towards the central office. Now the central office is actually located in Salt River. And this was the area which was actually the industrial heartland of the Cape Town area. And it's from these offices that the College of Cape Town is actually run. Now just to give you a quick picture of its size and shape. So it has around about 11,000 students located in eight different campuses. About 70% of the students are African, around 29% are colored students, and you've got a very small minority, around 2% of white and Indian students. It has really good facilities, so it's got open learning centers where you've got the latest tech, you've got really good computer rooms, the IT capabilities of this TVET college are really good. It's got three small residences, it's got a center of specialization, and it's also got higher education deals with UNISA and with uh, CPUT where it does the ICT higher certificate. And as we pull out over the Cape Town Harbour, I want to give you a sense of where the campuses are actually located because it's really in the Cape Flats that you see the College of Cape Town doing its good work in around about a 20 kilometer radius. And these campuses are located in areas of huge historical and still current struggle. Histories of land being stolen, of people being forced to relocate from their place of birth with long histories away further and further from the center of Cape Town. And one of the first acts of dispossession can be seen right in front of you, that beautiful green zone where those three rivers are meeting. Basically over there you've got the Black River and the Salt River and the Lisbeck Estuary. And that is where the Khoi used to come with their huge herds of cattle and grazed in the summer months and then leave in the winter months for the sweeter and more nutritious grass which is located in the Swatberg and the Frienberg areas. This is actually our first historic frontier where the Dutch actually set up guard houses and watch houses to try and force the Khoi away from this area resulting in the first struggle between the white settlers moving in and our indigenous people who'd been living here for thousands of years suddenly finding themselves forced away from these areas. And it's over here that we have the Pinelands campus. Now this used to be the old Maitland Tech which was really for poor white people to be skilled up in basic skills that then became the Western Province Tech. And it's over here that you can do electrical engineering. And you can see that it's got those 22 workshops over there and labs. You've got an accredited refrigeration and electrical trade test center. And it's right next to the Oder Molen Technical High School, which is really the first technical high school in Cape Town. And there you can do technical subjects, you can do engineering and graphics design, and you can do technical maths and science, and you can do what's called electrical, civil and mechanical technology. So you have the combination of a technical school right next to the actual campus. And I want to do a radical pullout, tracking the old N2 and the railway lines leaving Cape Town. So you can get a sense of the full extent of what Cape Town is, rather than just the picturesque Table Mountain and the beautiful houses surrounding the mountain itself. And to get a sense of the huge working class sections of Cape Town spreading all the way around. And this is what the College of Cape Town is speaking to. And there's a long, rich history of artisanal development in this area. Now, the Thornton campus used to be an old high school. And it's actually the mechanical and civil engineering hub. It's got 30 tutorial rooms, they've got whiteboards and internet. It's got five trading academies where you can do hand skills and machining and welding and fitting and plumbing. And then look out for the really nice residence system with about 120 students there. It's got a nice swimming pool. There's soccer fields and there's netball fields and basketball. So it's a great space to study. And now I want to travel to the Athlone campus via the Cape Town Fresh Produce Market. And this is a huge market where all the fresh produce which is grown in places like Philippi are then distributed across Cape Town. 
And nearby the market you have the old Athlone power station, now decommissioned because of the Kuberg nuclear plant. And it used water from the uh, Athlone sewerage plant, which is right next door. Infamous for the Athlone Pong, the stench that tends to come from that area, which I now understand has been substantially fixed. And it's right next to the sewerage plant that you have the Athlone campus. Now this used to be a tech college and it's got four fully equipped automotive skills workshops. It's got a trade testing center. It's also got a center of specialization in automotive motor mechanics. It's got partnerships with leading auto repair garages all across the area. And it also does some mechanical engineering in the NCV and NATED. And you can get a sense in this whole zone and with the College of Cape Town in general that you've got all these kinds of, I'd call them working class, small businesses, all trying to make a go of it with a huge long history of artisanship and skills in this area. And also the struggle between non-racial forms of education in this area of teaching and learning skills and professions and then a far more racially biased way of doing education. And as we pull back over Devil's Peak and travel towards Crawford campus, this really gives us a chance to explore this because this used to be the old Hewitt Teachers Training College. And this was previously known rather horribly as the Cape Town Coloured Training Centre. And it was initially based in Ruland Street and that's in District 6. And there at that location is now the Harold Creasy High School. And he was the first black university graduate in South Africa. And you can hear the struggle both with that school and with this college initially to hold on to a non-racial identity in terms of the education that was going on. But in the 60s and the 70s with apartheid, it became increasingly racialized. But this is now broken down. And we have this wonderful new Crawford campus. And this has over 4,000 students currently. It does business studies, it does ICT. You can do all sorts of Microsoft Office and Cisco and Java certificates. It offers ECD, Early Childhood Development. So let's pull back from the Crawford campus and let's pull back over Table Mountain itself. And I want to pull out over the reservoirs right on top of Table Mountain, the Woodhead and de Villiers dams with the aqueducts over there. And this historically used to provide water to all of Cape Town. And when Cape Town got bigger, they had to start to go across to those other mountains over there, the Swartberg, to collect enough water for all the people. And then let's swoop down through Constantia Neck, past the beautiful wine lands of Constantia with the accumulated wealth of centuries of white privilege traveling towards the Weinberg campus. And this is a place where you can do an occupational career in hair and beauty therapy. Now it's got fully equipped hair and beauty salons. You've got a center of specialization over there focusing in this area. You've got a trade test center. And basically you actually learn how to cut hair and work with beauty because that's the salons that are there. You have real life people walking in from Constantia and the local areas with enough money to afford these kinds of things. So now let's pull out of Weinberg towards False Bay so we can get a picture of the huge extent of the Cape Flats. And what I want you to look out for is Philippi with all its vegetable gardens because it's got a natural aquifer, huge amounts of water under there helping produce the vegetables. And the produce from that goes to that fresh market, that fresh produce market we saw in Athlone. And we're now traveling towards the last campus in Guguletu. And I kind of want to set the scene for this by flying around and over the Cape Town airport. And the reason for that is almost all foreigners remark when they land at Cape Town airport and then they go traveling from Cape Town airport towards Cape Town. They're suddenly horrified by the huge contrast that happens between what they expect of Cape Town and the rich golf course which you can see over there which by the way interestingly enough is a Jewish owned golf course which is now being sold and then straight on the left hand side as you're traveling to Cape Town the uh, township of Guguletu. It's clear from what you can see there that it was meant to accommodate migrant workers. 
So you have people from the cis sky and the trans sky who are coming to stay here, but only in a transitional way. They had to come here and work and leave. So you'd have barrack-like homes meant for single people, a real attempt to stop family life from happening. And it's over here that you have the Guguletu campus, Toza for Pride. It was the former uh, Sivuyila Technical College. And you can begin to hear that the College of Cape Town historically struggled against racism, but the actual institutions developed over time a very white and colored and black history. And it's these that have been amalgamated together into this newly functioning college. And over here you can do business studies and you can do electrical engineering in the NCV line. And as we do a radical pullback from Google to I can't help but wonder how Ochumato would have felt and thought about the Steve at college. You know, he was an entrepreneurial soul who was trying to hold together uh, Southern African indigenous logics and rituals and ways of being along with Western and more Dutch and British ways of being. And he tried to hold it together only to get completely destroyed by the logic of colonialism. And we see in these campuses the history of racism with its white and colored and black histories and periods before that where there were real struggles to ensure that that didn't happen and that a more non-racial dynamic actually worked. And now we have a college with its campuses straddling all those old frontiers going from the city center outwards past the frontiers which was initially around the Swat River and then shifting further and further out Thornton Way and now all the way through to Gigule to holding all of Cape Town as a place to do education and skills development.